Good evening and welcome back to another edition of Cue Ball's Cutting Corner. I am Cue Ball and for tonight we're going to take a look at two of my favorite budget knives and what's happened recently with both these knives in terms of a makeover. Both of these knives have been beloved by the knife community for a long time. We're finally seeing each of these knives get the, the recognition and the upgrades that they both deserve. I'm gonna go ahead and bring out the first knife. And for most of you in the community, you know what this is. This is the Civivi Praxis, and this has become one of the icons of the knife community in terms of budget goodness. My particular version here happens to be the Damascus version with the 9CR, and then this is the Black G10. As you can see, there's some nice texturing on this. This one has the Civivi a synonymous v Civivi uh, pivot, uh, C, and then T8 on the body screws, and then T6s on the pocket clip. And this is a deep carry pocket clip. Uh, it's not recessed, but it does work very, very well. Uh, very, you know, Civivi-like. <laughs> What's great about this knife, though, is just the ergos and how this knife feels in hand. I love it. You got this nice choke up spot as well. You can really get in there and just, you know, do some really fine detail work. This is all around an incredible slicer, very, very thin behind, um, or thin blade sock and then thin behind the edge as well. I haven't really, you know, gone through and done some detailed measurements, but I can. Uh, so if you'd like uh, for me to do that, maybe in another video, uh, go ahead and, and post up in the comment section. I'll be more than happy if I get enough requests, I'll do that. So I do have a, a, some pretty good tools to take and, uh, you know, just give you the overall dimensions. But most of this stuff you can find online. And, and this knife has been reviewed by so many channels. Uh, I'm not going to do a full review of this knife, obviously. But one, one thing I really love about this knife, along with the ergos, is just the action. The flipper action on this knife is just amazing. It just shoots right out. The detent is just dialed in perfectly. It's beautiful. And given that this has got a little bit of texturing, you know, you can feel the Damascus, you can actually reverse flick this with both the ring finger as well as your middle finger with no problems whatsoever. It would be nice if this had, you know, a thumb stud, you know, that you could use here. Uh, then you could really, you know, get, get up here and, and reverse flick. But to, to be quite honest, it's so simple. Uh, the detent is just so perfect on this knife. It, uh, it's a very fidgety you know, knife considering that it really was only meant to have one form of deployment. Super smooth. And these are just, I have, ne I have actually yet to replace any of the stock bearings on all my knives. I, I'm still running stock. So it, that's a testament to this design. And uh, obviously just, you know, yeah, just <laughs> the, the good tolerances that they, that they, uh, that they took, they, they created this knife with. This is an awesome, awesome, awesome EDC knife. I'm gonna go ahead and get eventually uh, just a, a plain version of this so I can actually like use it, use it. It's just, this is such a nice addition with the Damascus. I just don't wanna, I just don't wanna tear this one up, but I do carry this one every now and then. So um, you can kind of see hints of blue in there. It's, I don't know if you can see that, it's just, I don't know, it just plays off the light. Maybe that's just because my walls are blue. I don't know. It's just, it's gorgeous. Absolutely gorgeous. A uh, couple features on this knife. You can see that there's lots of skeleton, skeletonization being done to these steel liners on the inside. Uh, and then, of course, this is a liner lock. It's about 30% on the lockup. So not too shabby. But gosh, it's just so smooth. And the sounds. That tink at the end when it uh, when it goes back in, it's tink. Yeah, it just flies out. Yeah, awesome knife. So yes, the Civivi Praxis. Now the next knife, another budget knife that I really absolutely adore and love. This is the Kubi KU three two two, and it's called the Titius or the Titius. <laughs> 
uh, I will absolutely link both of these knives down below in the, uh, the description. And this is also one of my favorite budget knives. And the reason being that a lot of people say this looks like a poor man's uh, areas just because of the blade shape. And, and it does kind of have similar, you know, the similar uh, shape here along the, the edge, you know, the belly. I'm not going to deny that there is some similarities there, but in terms of the handle, not even close, you know, the Arius, uh, you know, it has this big section that comes way up and it allows you to really get in there uh, and just, yeah, it's, it's a lot more ergonomic than this guy, but I will say that this guy is very, very ergonomic uh, considering that, you know, the price point on this knife is only around 35 to $40. It's crazy. Uh, so on this particular version, this is D2. It does come with a stone wash finish. Uh, I do use this knife. Uh, so this one does, is not perfect. The G10 is a very good quality G10. You can see here with the, the KB, uh, that is Kubi's uh, budget uh, B series. I, they have, it's kind of weird how they, they have their different levels. Uh, obviously, we have the T8 hardware here for the body screws, and then for the uh, for the pocket clip, it's also T6, just like the Civivi. Again, not recessed. However, it is uh, using the flat screws, which is nice. This pocket clip works every bit as good as the Civivi. We have again heavily skeletonized steel liners, and again, the lockup on this one is about the same as the Civivi. Uh, maybe a little bit more, about 40, 45%. So uh, this knife has an amazing flipper tab. It's so comfortable. You can see the jimping on this guy. Just, it's perfect. Uh, it's perfect for the light switch. Um, it's perfect, or excuse me, light switch. It's perfect for the push button. And yeah, it just, the detent is dialed in. And this one's just as smooth as the CVD Praxis. And you have this nice fuller here. You have the hole. And this one is super fidgety. You can literally, you know, there's so many different ways that you can deploy this knife. There's the thumb flick. There's the reverse flick. And, of course, you have the back, uh, the back flip there. So um, I like this knife a lot just because in my big hands, it's chonky, you know, but uh, that's a good thing. You know, it's tall through here, and I really feel like I can just get an, an amazing purchase on this knife. Uh, that's probably another reason why I like the, the Praxis, too, because it, too, is a fairly tall, you know, tall knife. Uh, I can really get a, a nice, good purchase on this one. Now, there are some differences, you know, between both knives. Obviously, the Praxis uh, has a little bit more of a choil area here where I can take and choke up. You can do that, too, with the with the... KU322 or the Titius, but it's not nearly as, uh, you know, I'm a little bit more scrunched in and probably uh, <laughs> taking a chance there, you know, of, of slicing my, my finger there. So I don't usually choke up on this one too often. Both of these are excellent knives. And if you haven't experienced either of them, I would highly, highly recommend checking these out. Uh, you can find them on pretty much Amazon. You can find them on White Mountain uh, Knives. You can find them on, uh, you know, most of your, your knife retail, retailers are going to have these knives now. So uh, Kubi and, and Civivi are, are both, you know, very well done. Even though these are Chinese made, they're just an excellent value and they're built very, very, very well. Now we're going to move to... <laughs> I told you in the, earlier in the video that both of these had received some makeovers. And so we're going to take a look at the first one here. And that is, oh, <laughs> this is the titanium frame lock version of the Praxis. And oh, there is that awesome slicey blade shape, even thinner blade stock here. And you have this nice swedge at the top. And it just is super slicey. And I mentioned earlier that it would have been nice, you know, for the Praxis to have thumb studs. Well, <laughs> my wishes came true. There is the thumb studs and they do not disappoint. Although even without the thumb studs, you can still deploy this knife 
with the reverse flick off the blade. Uh, I think I can actually pinky flick this. Yep, there we go. It's amazing. And then it has the same comfortable, uh, this looks like it may, you know, it's not gonna be that comfortable, but it really is. You just put your finger right over the top and just give it a little pull and that knife just comes shooting out. I would have to say that the deployment on this version of the Praxis is better than the original. And, and that's, that's saying a lot because the original is so good. You can see they chamfered the titanium very similar to what they did with the budget version. What's interesting though, is that the, the titanium version is thinner than the budget version. Of course, you don't have the steel liners on this one because this one's just a done in full titanium. Uh, so it makes it a, uh, actually a, you know, a, a better carry in the pocket. I still can get a really good purchase on this. And because of the height of the, of the handle, I don't feel like this is too thin. Uh, for some of you who've seen the new, <clears throat> I will say it here, Benchmade Narrows, uh, this one's not nearly as thin as the Narrows. So it, you know, it still feels good and comfortable in the hand. Um, what's great too about this, uh, it has a titanium deep carry pocket clip that has been recessed with the flat screws. So, and it gives you a little bit more clearance too under this clip. And to be quite honest, this clip feels, I don't feel this nearly as much as I do on the budget one. And the budget one, I didn't feel that, that often. I mean, I didn't, I don't feel that much, uh, but this particular version, ugh, it just melts into my hand. Again, the action on this is just incredible. Yes, I have taken apart all of these knives that I'm sharing tonight and uh, worked my cue ball magic, magic on them. But again, none of these are running with uh, aftermarket bearings. Everything is stock on, on all four of these knives. Oh, just amazing, amazing action. Uh, again, rock solid uh, lockup. If there was one issue about this knife that I wish was just a little bit better, given that this is a thinner version than the liner lock budget, uh, it's just a little bit better access to the lock bar. It's it's not bad because they do take and chamfer the you know the edge here, and they also take uh, went ahead and milled out, just give you a little bit of milling there for texture. Uh, it's not too bad. I think as this knife breaks in, it's going to be easier and easier or get easier and easier to, uh, you know, to, um, to unlock, which is good. Uh, another thing I don't like obviously are these, uh, here where the, the, the uh, cutout is for the lock bar. I wish that was, those were done on the inside. Um, but again, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. Uh, this is an exclusive and gosh, can't remember right now at the top of my head. I should have had some notes with me, uh, but this was put out by um, one company, and I will make sure that I link it. I think these are sold out. To be quite honest, these were a little a uh, little over two hundred. I think two hundred and ten, two hundred and twenty, somewhere around there. But again, for what you're getting, it, this is an amazing price, and just yeah, this is just an excellent, excellent, excellent upgrade to the budget model. So. All right, so I said that uh, you know there was also recently an upgrade done to this guy, and here it is. This is the titanium version of the Tidius KU322 by Kubi, and it, it's a winner. <laughs> it really is. Uh, so this knife uh, goes for about $125, and a lot less than the Praxis, and the reason being is that this one, even though it's titanium and it is milled, uh, this one's actually contoured as well, which is amazing. It actually contoured this, uh, which makes it even more comfortable than the original. The blade steel on this is 14C 20, uh, 28N, which is not quite as premium as what's done on the Praxis titanium. This one is S35VN. So better blade steel on the Praxis. And, but for the price of this knife, I paid right around hundred dollars. And then Kubi had a sale. These were going for 93 bucks, which is just insane. 
And I know that they still have them available on their website and you might be able to find a discount code. Heck, if I find one, I'll throw one up. Uh, but this knife is just beautiful. And they have different versions with the anodization. I know there's a green one. There's also just the natural titanium. Um, I don't know if there is a gold version, uh, but again, I'll, I'll take and put the links up so you can check them out on Kubi's website. But even the hardware is titanium and anodized as well. Uh, the only thing that's not is the steel uh, standoffs here. I wish those were, were <laughs> titanium and they were anodized too. It looked really cool, uh, but it's not that bad. Uh, again, quite a bit of milling on the inside there for weight relief. You can see on both sides of the handle. And given that this is a frame lock and not a liner lock, you would think, okay, there's going to be a lot of difference in terms of the detent and the action. And no, there's not. Actually, I think this thing makes some amazing sounds. Whoops. Hit my camera again. <laughs> I'll get used to that. Yeah, it's just mm, butter just shoots right out. And then again, no change to the flipper tab. This has still got amazing jimping and it's still what I consider to be one of the most comfortable flipper tabs on any knife. You have this nice jimping too uh, here on the blade that uh, you can just really get a nice purchase. Feel really locked into this knife. It just, mm. Uh, this has a almost a bead blast, but it, it looks like it might be just a fine stone wash finish on this blade. I'm not really concerned because it's 14C28N and it's pretty uh, stain resistant. Uh, the pocket clip is also recessed. So they uh, took a, um, a page out of the Praxis book and went ahead and recessed the pocket clip here. So, and they gave it a little bit of height. It's kind of funny. I'm wondering, hmm, I don't know. They, they kind of look. Very similar in terms of the way they did those pocket clips. Very, very close, right? Interesting. So uh, the micro milling, as you can see, oh, just amazing. Feels so good in the hand. And this isn't that deep, but it's textured enough to where it just feels really good in the hand. So really love the action on this knife. It's breaking in very, very well. It's got a ways to go, but it is, it'll get there for sure. It's just so well done. And for the price, I mean, come on, 125 bucks, you're getting a solid, solid value. I mean, this is like Tucson territory in terms of price with the 14C28N. So awesome job, Kubi. All right. Um, you know what I can do? I'm going to actually, let's look at some of the weight differences here. I got my, uh, old kitchen scale out now, but it still looks like it's in pretty good condition. I'm just curious, what uh, what are some of the weight differences here? So let's check out the original Kubi KU322. So 4.85 ounces, that's a pretty hefty knife. And a lot of it is because of this, you know, the thick steel liners uh, and that giant blade there. That's, I mean, that's a lot of uh, D2. <laughs> uh, and then let's check out uh, the new version. So 4.95. 5.05 let's see 5.05 so again still a hefty boy five ounces 5.05 i don't know it's close enough but uh still a hefty boy but gosh when you get this in hand because of how big you know this blade is uh it doesn't feel like it's too you know handle heavy which is a good thing so yeah love this knife mm. both of these knives all right, uh, let's take a look at the original CVV Praxis. So 4.35, so a little bit less material on this knife than the Kubi. So 4.35 and then 3.8. And again, there's that difference between no steel liners and you know thinner blade stock, thinner materials. Uh, this makes this knife just even better for pocket carry. Yeah, it's just snappy. So, just so snappy. All right. Well, I uh, I just love all four of these knives. I'm going to be carrying these quite a bit. 
Um, I haven't had carried these guys in quite some time, but uh, now that I have these versions, I'm definitely going to take and start rotating these in into my daily carry again. Um, need to give them some love uh, as well. Uh, when you have a lot of knives, uh, some of them <laughs> kind of get lost uh, or forgotten about. Uh, but of course, you know, that's just the nature of, uh, of collecting. But uh, these are two very, very good knives, um, even though they're budget. And of course, you know, the more premium versions, uh, definitely going to be carrying those quite a bit too. So, all right. If you're interested in owning any of these knives, again, I will take and put those down in the link. Uh, excuse me, the link's down in my comments, the description. <laughs> uh, and if you have any experience with any four of these knives, I'd love to hear your thoughts, what you feel. Um, yeah. So tell me how you like them or what you don't like. All right. Thank you so much for uh, checking out my video tonight. I hope you enjoyed uh, these knives and we'll catch you on the next one. Ugh, wait, I can't use that one. Have a nice evening and God bless.